Welcome back everyone. In today's video I'm going to talk about the TDA 2050. One of these little 5 pin type chip amps. They come in a TO220 type case. This came out in 1991. At least it showed up as preliminary data in my October 1991 SGS Microelectronics Datasheet Catalog. Of course SGS became ST Microelectronics. And in 2013, I believe it was, yeah, it's been about four years ago, they discontinued this chip. But I found a source where you can get authentic ones. The ones you buy on eBay are more than likely fakes. Now I'll hook one of these up and do the usual power test and music test and all that good stuff. And I'll compare it to the LM1875 and see which chip do I think is better. As far as setting it up, I'll use one of these LM1875 boards. It's compatible, it's pin for pin compatible, so you know you can hook it right into the same board with the same components. However, you will have to change the Zobel network components. And this is just a blank board here. Like I said, these are excellent boards. You know, they got the grounds really laid out nice. Nice thick ground planes and separated signal grounds from the power and output, which is very good. And you can buy these boards completely in a kit. It's an LM1875 board, but like I say, I'm just going to put this chip on it in place of the 1875. Okay, I have it all set up on the board here. Put a decent size heatsink on it. Now this is a split type supply, meaning it requires a positive and negative voltage relative to ground. So I set the supply up in serial mode and uh, using that to drive my positive and negative supply voltages. Okay, I have the music player, of course, going through the preamp and last few videos I've been using my uh, mixing box it'll combine the stereo signals into mono of course this being a mono amplifier this will sum and differentiate the channels and you can also turn the left and right channels off, on and off if you want if you want me to make a video on that I can do that at some point but for now let's uh, give a little music test here. That's Still I Span with Matty Pryor on the vocals from the album Below the Salt. Sheep Crook and Black Dog, name of the song. If you wondered the type of music I listen to, well, I listen to quite a bit of music. But I'm into the old British folk type music. A lot of uh, revival type bands back in the early 70s. Okay, well, let's get on with some more tests of the TDA 2050. Okay, running the supply at 18 volts, 36 volts total, plus minus 18. And this is clipping. We'll tune out the harmonics. And as always, that's the 1% pilot signal. That's the 1 kilohertz fundamental. And no distortion at all, as far as this scope can see. So this is excellent performance. I'll do a bunch of power measurements. I have a 4 ohm load resistor on there now. Non-inductive. And we'll take measurements just before clipping. Running about 10.7 volts or so. That would be a little over 25 watts. Eh, probably around 28 watts or so. I'll come back with all of the results. Okay, running the frequency sweep 20 to 20 kilohertz. Of 
and I assure you it'll be completely flat. There is a small variation and I have determined that is from the music player but it's very small. The amp itself will be completely flat and I'm smelling some really hot resistors. These things are probably burning my table. <laughs> Uh, when we get to 20, oh, the wire came off. Let me get that back on there real quick. And when we get around 20 kilohertz, it'll start falling off. Again, that's the music player. You can see it, yeah, it kind of started falling off a bit. The amp will be flat well above the normal audio range. Okay, I have a bunch of data taken. Man, that takes some time to get all of those power measurements. Hope you guys appreciate it. But anyway, here's the results. This column is the supply voltage. So if you see, say, 20 volts, this actually means plus 10 and minus 10 from the dual supply. The actual measurement I've taken here is the voltage RMS on the scope. And I calculated the output current and the output power. One neat feature of this chip, it runs at a very low voltage. So I started at 5 volts, plus or minus 2.5 volts. And, of course, at such a low voltage, I didn't get a lot of power. I only got 120 milliwatts. And this whole section here is 8 ohms, by the way. The chip's maximum supply voltage is 50 volts, or plus or minus 25. And I was able to get... 34.45 watts. So how did it do in comparison with the LM1875? Well, at 12 volts, I got 1.11 watts from the 1875 and 1.47. So the TDA2050 is doing a little better there. So let's take something from the middle of the range. 30 volts. I got 10.7 from the 2050 and 10.56 from the 1875. So doing a little better with the 2050. Now again because of that limitation I can only go up to 50 volts with the 2050 but I could go up to 60 with the 1875 and it was able to deliver 42.32 watts. And of course, I can't, since I can't go that high, I can't get that high a measurement. But in either case, you don't really want to run the chip at its absolute maximum all the time. So if we back off and say like 40 volt supply, we can get 21.13 from the 2050. And back off about 10 volts from the 1875 putting us at 50 volts we can get 31.21 so with 8 ohm loads there is an advantage to the 1875 however at the same supply voltage the 2050 actually did a little better now let's move on to 4 ohm loads now here are the 4 ohm load results and with the 2050 at 40 volts I was getting 37.21 watts at 40 volts with the 1875 I was getting 31.36 so the 2050 is really doing much better let's check out another supply voltage How about 30 volts 21.11 18.62 so with a heavier load the 2050 is putting more output and I did measure 4 ohm loads all the way up to 50 volts with the 2050. And look at this, 50.41 watts. Wow, we actually got 50 watts. And that's non-clipping. All these measurements are no distortion pre-clipping type measurements. Just like the spectrum analyzer mode on the scope shows no distortion, I set the point just before clipping where there's no distortion and I was getting that kind of power that 
is pretty darn good. With the 1875, it didn't go as high. I kind of stopped. I thought I was reaching the limit, so I stopped. But we'll look at the 2 ohm results here and see how they performed. And for the 2 ohm results, well, I knew I was going to hit the current limit. Both chips have built in current limiting, so you don't damage them from running too much current through them. And with the 2050, it hit current limit around 3.6 amps. And the 1875 hit current limit just over 3 amps, like 3.1 or so. And I was able to get 27 watts out of the 2050 with 36 volt supply. And I could only go up to 32 with the 1875, which was just shy of 20 watts. So at a more safe voltage for 2 ohm loads, let's say 20 volts, I was getting 14.31 watts from the 2050 and 11.66 from the 1875. So that shows you that the 2050 does have a little bit more output current capability since we were to go a little bit higher. And at a given supply voltage, its output voltage swing is a little bit better so it can give you the slightly higher wattage values. Okay, let's take a look at the data sheet. First, the 2050. This is the power versus distortion curve. So we're going across the power band and the harmonic distortion percentage right here. Well, you can see at one kilohertz, it's running very low, really good, excellent. Of course, it's going to go up here because of clipping. At 15 kilohertz, it's riding around the 0.1, so it is somewhat higher there. At 4 ohms, pretty much the same deal. 1 kilohertz is very low, and at the 15 kilohertz line, it's running a little bit higher. It's running over 0.1. Now, I'd like to see below 0.1 for anything considered a high phi amp. But again, it's questionable if you would hear harmonics at 15 kilohertz because the second harmonic would be at 30 kilohertz and the third would be 45 and so on. Though it's conceivably possible that they could combine with other uh, signals to generate intermodulation artifacts that are in the hearing range, but because they're so low, you're not going to hear it anyway. So I don't think that's really a big issue. Here is the frequency versus distortion. And they're running at, they're showing two lines here. They're running one at 15 watts and another one at 100 milliwatts. And it's running around. 0.1 at 100 milliwatts. It's actually lower at higher power. Quite low. Same with 4 ohms. So it's doing pretty good across the frequency band. One little annoying thing is, I don't know why ST Microelectronics, they didn't go down to 20 hertz. They, here's the graph. It starts at 30 and the lines actually start around 40 and they stop at 15 kilohertz. They didn't do the full spectrum. But again, you know, for most music, I, I just don't see it being much of an issue. Now with the 1875, they show a power versus distortion. And at 4 ohm loads, this line just scrapes under the 0.1 and actually drops as power increases. At 8 ohm loads, it's like 0 0.06 or something like that at this highest point, but it, out, it also decreases. And here is a frequency band chart. They're going from 20 to 20 kilohertz like they should. 0 0.1 is up here. Here's the 4 ohm line and the 8 ohm line. And you can see it's excellent. It's much, much lower. And this is a 10 watt line. So they're running it at kind of like a mid power rating. So the curves they supplied between the data sheets are 
different so it's hard to draw a solid conclusion but it does look like the 1875 is much better with the distortion handling okay so 2050 advantages slightly more power at the same supply voltage and load and because you have a higher current capability before the current limit kicks in you're able to get more power from lower impedance loads another nice advantage is low voltage supply it makes it very versatile if you want to run it on uh, 5 volts you can like I say you don't get a lot of power but it makes it a very versatile chip as far as the LM1875 it's still available the uh, 2050 is obsolete but I'll show you momentarily where you can get them because of the higher supply voltage with 8 ohm loads you can actually get more power from this IC and like I say probably lower distortion at least it's spec that way and I know a lot of the hi-fi gurus who play with these smaller chips tend to lean towards the 1875 but again these distortion figures are so low I think they're going to be inaudible in either case now here is a potential source for a TDA 2050 it's the Del Bani Corporation I have purchased ICs from them these are actually pulled out of products I don't know exactly the story but I think you know sometimes they build circuit boards or something you know large corporations and they decide to cancel the product and they have all these boards left over so this company can go in there and recover ICs off the boards because they have some value to them but you might bulk at the price you know it's about seven dollars but if you bought this from Mauser or DigiKey you know the chip itself usually cost around two dollar or three dollars and you'd have to ship it for three or four dollars cheapest rate probably uh, which would be first class so you know you're actually paying about the same price I think it's a good deal I have purchased chips from this company before recovered ones and they all work fine they all tested as far as I can tell to be authentic so I would at least try this company I haven't purchased a chip a uh, 2050 from them but I, like I say I purchased other chips and they were good I think they're a good company so uh, there is one source on eBay with actual authentic chips and you'll see a bunch of other crap and you can't tell by price they could be expensive they could be cheap um, you know you never know they could be looking for suckers so you could be getting fake ones you know like this one here 10 pieces for 206 yeah I don't think you're gonna get real ones shipping's only two bucks so you know about four dollars for ten of these uh, no way are they authentic and even the more expensive ones you have to watch it's just hard to tell being a obsolete product and what you're gonna get so which chip would I lean towards man it is a tough call they each have their little advantages it's almost a draw for me but in any case I have my hoard of both types so you know I'm not too concerned as for the chips themselves we'll let them fight it out that's it thanks for watching